Welcome you to Central Moments today, and as we continue here in our last week for this summer of Summer with the Psalms, uh, we come to a psalm that's been a life psalm for me, Psalm 73. This psalm greatly impacted my life when I was a college student, and it starts with the prophet and the songwriter Asaph, who is one of David's primary worship leaders. He's in a crisis of faith, and he said in verse 1, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. So I, I know that technically. God's good to good people. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped and I nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant and saw the prosperity of the wicked. So he's having a crisis of faith. Um, No problem believing God blesses good people. But why does God let wicked people be blessed? And so verse 12, he's, he's, he's looking at the wicked. He said, this is what the wicked are like. They're always free of care, and they go on amassing wealth. They're they're popular and prosperous. And and what hurts so much is that he's trying to follow God, and he doesn't feel that way at all. The next verse, surely in vain I've kept my heart. He's saying, I don't think it's been worth it to try to live a holy life and and to live under the constraints of following the Lord. I mean, the, the, the wicked just do what they want, and they're happy, they're having fun, and they're rich. And me... I mean, what's wrong with this picture? Why am I trying to keep my heart pure and washing my hands in innocence every day, trying to live right? Because what am I getting for it? Verse 14, all day long I've been afflicted and every morning brings new punishment. So the wicked are popular and prosperous. Me, I'm trying to follow the Lord and I'm plagued and punished. And he says in verse 15, because he was a worship leader, he said, if I had spoken out like that, I wouldn't be... betrayed your children. I almost went public with my doubts and my crisis of faith. And he said, I probably would have hurt more people than it would have helped. But he said, on the other hand, verse 16, when I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. Until, I like to, I like to say he made the mistake of going to church one too many times. Till I enter it, entered the sanctuary of God. And then I understood their final destiny. Because he now sees the wicked from the perspective of his worship of God in the temple, he sees the wicked from the perspective of eternity, not the perspective of this short life. And he says, all these blessings, supposedly the wicked are enjoying, they're no more real and no more long-lasting than a good dream that suddenly they wake out of and it ends. And the wicked are going to wake up someday and realize that everything they've enjoyed in this life is no more substantial in terms of eternity than a dream. And he said, I saw their end. This is why we need worship, because we we come together and see life from a whole different angle and different perspective. And as often happens in our lives, and this is what I heard so profoundly put when I was a college student, God doesn't always answer our questions, but he usually is always trying to change our perspective. Then he gives us a little editorial commentary he, he's uh, looking back with hindsight. He said, when my heart was grieved and my spirit bitter, when I was just so frustrated over how the wicked seemed to be so blessed, he said, I, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. And pain can always distort our perspective. God wants to give us a new perspective. But sometimes we think with our pain more than we think with our brain. And, and, and I, I just encourage you, don't ever come to a final conclusion about who God is or God's love for you while you're hurting. And don't, don't make major life decisions while you're in pain and you're just bitter and you're angry and you're frustrated and God doesn't make sense and life doesn't make sense. That's not the time to make a major decision. The psalmist said, when I was grieved and my spirit embittered, uh, I wasn't very bright. Yet, bottom line, verse 23, I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will take me into glory. And he gets his theology right in the second last verse. Those who are far from you will perish. The wicked will perish. You're going to destroy all those unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. And oh, that that would be the bottom line in every one of our lives. Father, we thank you for your way in our lives and our good, our good, is not popularity and prosperity, but our good is just to be near you, 
even though we may feel plagued and punished some days, even though the way of holiness seems to be the constrained way, even though we're saying no to some of our desires in order to please you, my God, our good is to be near you. And you have taken us by your hand and you're guiding us with your counsel and you will take us not to the end of a temporary dream, but you will bring us to glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. In your name, amen.